You are listening to Creating Active Lives with me, Sarah Blytho, and my regular weekly guests. And we are all here to share the research, the science, and the strategies, as well as some of the fun, to help you to create a more active life. Hello and welcome to this episode of Creating Active Lives with me, Sarah Belito, and my guest this week, Charlotte Lawson. Uh, Charlotte is a wellbeing coach who helps busy people pleasers and quick whisper, I think that's a lot of us out there, but she helps busy people pleasers swap distraction for for presence, swap self-criticism for self-compassion and swap unrealistic expectations for sustainable daily progress so that they can finally make themselves a priority and have time for things that are important to them. This is something I'm really passionate about is that sustainable small steps daily progress as well. Charlotte, I'll get you to introduce yourself in a moment, but we're calling this put your own oxygen mask on first because I think it's something that as women A lot of us prioritise other people. And hopefully by the end of this episode, you'll have a couple of little ideas that you can go away and start implementing to prioritise yourself. So, Charlotte, tell us a little bit about what you do and why you got into it. Hello. Thank you so much for having me, Sarah. So, yes, I'm Charlotte Lawson. I'm a wellbeing coach um, and I love, love helping people pleasers to actually get themselves off the bottom of the priority list so they can actually do the things that are important to them rather than just running around after everybody else all the time feeling like they've not even got time to meet their own basic needs and that that might be some of you out there you know barely having time for a shower if you've got young kids and so I love helping people please is actually prioritize themselves do the things that are important to them and for you and your listeners that's going to be having an active lifestyle and that was on is me as well you know having an active lifestyle is hugely important to me um and i am a recovering people pleaser <laughs> So I've been there. I've, you know, I've put my all into work. I've burnt out. I absolutely don't want that for anybody else. So that's why I'm doing what what I'm doing now and and working with other people pleasers to help them put themselves first. And it's it's not about saying I'm the only thing that matters. It's not about saying, right, everybody else can just go hang themselves because right now all I want to do is put me first. It's not about that, is it? It's about a much more subtle prioritisation of your own needs. And I think this is, you know, this episode's first going out in the middle of February and it's a time when I bet you anything, there's so many women out there who say, January, I'm. this is the year I'm going to get active. This is the year I'm going to start exercising. This is the year I'm going to do things. And so many of them would have got to the middle of February, six weeks in and gone, oh, I haven't actually been to the gym yet. I haven't actually been for that walk. I haven't been for that run. And this is one of the things is that, as I'd say people pleaser, but as a busy woman often, and it applies to men as well, but particularly women, there's always something that we perceive as being more important. Yeah. Isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. And just coming back to your point that it's not just all about me, me, me. Um, I think a really nice way of looking at it is it's about saying me too. So it's it's not about leaving yourself off the list. And it's not about saying like, it's all about me. It's about saying I am important as well. It's me too. Um, and yeah, absolutely. Like on that whole, everyone's really busy and there's always something else that we're pushing up. I was just thinking about this on Monday. So I was um, doing a little bit of work and I don't normally get a chance to do work on a Monday, but I was doing a little bit of work and I've previously said to myself, right, on a Monday at three o'clock, I'm going to go swimming. Now I've missed a couple of weeks because having a toddler, I have like constant viruses. <laughs> so I've not been well enough, but this Monday I was actually well enough. And I was really into my work and I was like, oh, I just keep doing my work. And I was like, no, you've made the commitment to go swimming. Like that is really good for your health. Um, so I finished what I was doing and I went swimming at three o'clock and I did my 40 lengths and felt much better for it. So Yes, definitely. As busy women um, and people pleasers, we often do, don't we, think of all these other things that we perceive are more important, but ultimately, actually, there's nothing more important than our health. That's it. And, and you know, if you think about the inconvenience to everybody, if you were ill mm-hmm. and had to stop everything, um, being active and, you know, we're focusing on on 
giving yourself permission to get out there and do some sort of activity is so important because it's 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 a huge factor in promoting good health is being active and it doesn't have to be going to the gym or an exercise class for an hour it could be going for a walk it could be going for a swim it could be doing some relaxation but it's it's those moments of me time like you say me too me time where you're prioritizing your health and well-being in a really positive way and it it, the knock-on effect is that you have more energy even though it's taken maybe an hour out of your day to go swimming you've actually been more productive in the rest of the day because you, you're looking forward to that, aren't you? And also you've got that burst of energy afterwards. And this is something I think it is so important, but it's really hard if you're used to sort of, oh, yeah, okay, well, I'll, I'll do that then. I'll do, yeah, I'll do that for you. Yes, I'll do this. Yes. And then and then you realise it's Sunday afternoon again and you still haven't gone to the gym. Yeah. How do we, how do we kind of, A, how do we recognise that that's what we're doing? Because I think that's the first step, isn't it, is recognising and accepting that you put yourself last yeah I, I guess it is just being aware that these thoughts are coming up like oh man it's like evening time again and I've still not done the thing that I wanted to do for my own exercise or like you say it's Sunday it's Sunday afternoon again and I've still not done that that workout or you know started that running program or whatever it is that you want to do so it's just noticing actually oh this is a recurring theme like every night I am saying to myself oh haven't done it today again I'll do it tomorrow and if that's happening then that's a sign that actually something needs to change something needs to happen to help you actually get started and I I think it's the getting started is the hardest bit once you're actually in the routine of doing it then you're flying aren't you it's it's the getting started that's the hardest bit that's it I I know someone at the moment who's just gone back to running after years of not running and you know yes it's it's kind of okay this is my time and and initially it's a bit with this to do and that to do but actually the difference in her in her mindset in her attitude in everything since she's gone back to running is huge and she only runs for half an hour or so Mm. um but she now prioritizes that because before it was always well I've got to do this and I've got to get that and I've got to and I think it's a when you know right this is my half hour this is my hour I think sometimes you get a bit more organised about other things. You say, right, OK, I'm going to organise that, get that sorted. Kids' clothes are all ready for tomorrow because you just you kind of create time for it, don't you? And you, when you start to feel the benefits of, of that activity, of that, that me time, that self-care time, you start to recognise just how important it is. And it becomes like going to the dentist, going to the doctor, going to the supermarket. It's it's an essential part of your life it's a a kind of a given rather than a that would be nice but yeah isn't it yeah absolutely because it is that it's that that me time like you say it doesn't just like tick the box of oh I've done that thing so that's getting me closer to my goal of I don't know becoming stronger losing weight whatever that goal is but also like you said gives you energy it like helps you de-stress it helps you be a better person and show up in the way that you want to show up to everybody else because you have taken that time for yourself and you're not feeling resentful anymore and I think the point about how it fits into your life is really key because everybody's life looks different and everybody has different demands on their time and everybody has different um you know like schedules and I'm definitely not an evening person so try and get me to exercise in an evening that is never gonna happen but for some people actually evening's the perfect time because that's when they've got yeah that's when the kids are asleep and they've actually got loads of energy I mean I'm asleep with the kids <laughs> at that time so yeah. that doesn't work for me but for some people that really will so it's about actually looking at your day and thinking when is gonna be the best time for me to do this when is gonna be the time that this is actually going to happen because if there's too many barriers in the way then it's gonna be more difficult so looking at your life and your diary and deciding to start with when is the best time so that some of the barriers are already removed before you get started and then you can remove more barriers 
that's it and it's the more you know if you don't do that the problem is it's like oh well there's too much going on and you just perpetuate the the thought in your head that there's too much Mm -hmm. going on for you to do that I'm I'm a morning person I'm not an evening person either it's like you know come eight o'clock it's like can I go to bed now please (laughs) Um, but I'm I would I get I get out I've got a dog but I walk the dog at I'm out sometimes somewhere between half five and six every Mm -hmm. morning and I figure that that that's kind of my good time there's not many other people around but I've done it so if I don't do anything else for the rest of the day at least I've done something yeah. and for me that works really well and, and you know I mean I was I've always been an early riser but it's taken a while to get so in the habit of waking up at five o'clock and doing that that I don't even need an alarm or anything and it just sets up my day and the days when I can't do it because I've got grandchildren or whatever staying over I notice the difference in my mood. I notice the difference in my productivity. And I notice that I'm I'm kind of, well, I haven't gone out for a walk today. I haven't got my steps in. I haven't used that energy up. I notice the difference now because it's become part of my life. Mm. Um, and it's like you say, though, it's it's fitting it in when, you, you know, it might be that you actually take a lunch hour or a lunch half hour and do it then or in the evening or in the, whenever. But you have to, it has to fit with with your like your your schedule and your energy levels and commitments doesn't yeah. it yeah you've got to be realistic yeah yeah definitely have to be realistic because if you don't figure that out to start with then you're just going to set yourself up for failure because there hasn't been enough thought go into when is the right time you have to work out when when is that right time and but it's, I see, I always say to people, you know, make an appointment for your activity. Mm-hmm. Actually write it in your diary as an appointment because you're less likely to, to break it if it's there. Um, but I think some people, you know, feel guilty about that. But you, you'd have a hair appointment. As I say, you'd have a hair appointment, a dentist appointment, a doctor's appointment. You wouldn't feel guilty about that. And that's all part of self-care. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, and, and the hardest part, isn't it, of, of a lot of this isn't, it's not the starting necessarily. It's the, the habit it's the regular it's the it's the associating oh it's 10 o'clock that's my going for a walk time or it's six o'clock that's my go for a run time mm. it's creating that regular habit that your body then kind of almost gets into the sink of it and it's just like oh yeah no I can't do that I've got my run or I can't do that because I've got something else in my diary and I think do you think that helps people particularly people pleasers to to create that kind of appointment yeah absolutely so having that set time the appointment where you're committed and then another thing that can really help people is having an accountability partner so whether that is someone who you physically do it with or whether that is somebody who has a similar goal and is also wanting to get more active and you message them at the end of each day and say oh I've done my 10,000 steps today or I've done my yoga workout or whatever it you know whatever it is that you're each working on and you have that support I think that really helps as well and then coming back to the the guilt part there's some great questions that you can ask yourself around this if you are somebody who feels guilty about putting that time in the diary for yourself and for me those questions are around what are the benefits so what are the benefits not just for me but what are the benefits for other people because if you're a people pleaser and you're feeling guilty about it thinking about how other people benefit is something that we don't tend to do we always tend to go to the like oh no one else is going to benefit this is very selfish of me but that's not true at all other people are going to benefit from your better mood your better energy like if you've got children you're being such a good role model when when you go out Mm. and prioritize yourself you're showing them how to do that how to have an active healthy lifestyle so there's so many benefits so asking yourself the question like what do we get from this what do I get from this what do other people get from this and using those um, and reflecting on those and see if that helps with the guilt a little bit I think that you know that's such an important point I know um, someone I was talking to about outdoor activity she's um she is actually a fitness professional like me but her activity is all about outdoors. It's, you know, cold water swimming, surfing, all of the sort of outdoorsy sort of activities. And she she actually said, she said, if I don't, if I don't get to be active outside, I'm not very nice to live with. Yeah. And I, sometimes I think, you know, like you say, what are the benefits for other people? 
if I do this. We all know on the plane when they're doing the safety instructions and here are the exits and things. And it's like when your oxygen mask drop down, put your oxygen mask on first before you put them on for other people. And there's a reason for that. It's because, you know, time, you're going to be much calmer if you've dealt with yours and then you can deal with everything else. And But it applies in life, doesn't it? It's, you know, for a lot of people, activity or I don't know. It, it doesn't have to be activity. It could be going to the library for half an hour. It could be going to a coffee shop for half an hour. It could be sitting on a park bench and listening to the birds. But that is your kind of your oxygen mask. It's topping up your your resources bucket or whatever you care to call it. And that is something I think, you know, what are the benefits for other people if I do this for me? Yeah. And and that might help people to to. Ex- to to kind of justify it really isn't it yeah yeah and I think one of the other things about this as well is if you're really struggling to actually make a start and I saw a physio quite a few years ago for um like a a sports related injury and so this is a tip that came from her actually or a question I guess that came from her so I'd gone to see her she'd given me some exercises I'd done them for a few weeks and then I'd gone back and she said oh how did you get on I said oh yeah I did them for a few weeks but then like you know life got in the way and I haven't done them and I'm still struggling with this I can't even remember what the problem was I think it was Achilles pain um and yeah and she said to me well how important is it to you to actually do this thing that we're working towards so we I was wanting to get back to running at that point I was doing quite a lot of triathlons and running and um and she said how important is it to you because if it's important to you you need to do those exercises that I've prescribed for you if it's not important to you to get to, back to running then don't do the exercises it's fine so I think we can really use that in general exercise and go how important is it to you to be healthy, to be fit, to to spend this time on yourself? Because if it's important, then you can and will find a way to make it happen. And it might be you need support with that to help you make it happen. And that's fine. But if it's not important, just take that pressure off yourself. Because actually, there's yeah. something really empowering about saying, oh, This is something that I thought I wanted because society have told me that it's important, but actually I don't really want this. So take that pressure off. You can, you can choose because it's your life. You don't have to do it. But actually if you're on the other side of that and say, no, this is really important to me, then let's make that happen. And if you're struggling by yourself, then somebody will be able to help you. And I I think as well, it's, it's reframing, isn't it? Saying why is is exercising important to me? It's reframing it into is staying healthy and well important to me? Yeah. And will I, how will activity help that? So I think it's it don't look look at the the activity or the exercise as a means to staying healthy and well. And that sometimes helps people, doesn't it? We know that when people are diagnosed with a significant health um, diagnosis, medical diagnosis, when that's often when they actually start to become active because it's like, oh crikey, I don't want this happening again, or I, I want to make sure that I stay healthy. There's a there's a real value on exercising them because of their health. Mm. And again, it's the same thing. Is how important is it to me to be healthy, to stay fit, to stay able to please all the people around me? And actually, is half an hour a day, half an hour every other day worth that? Mm. And I think that maybe look at look at the end game rather than the the means to the end look at the end rather than the means to the end because like I say it's it's is in your case if it's Achilles you know ouchie but it's is it important to me to go back to running maybe not but is it important to you to not have pain in your life yes Mm. and it's it's looking at things differently how important is this how important is that um and I think that's something people don't do they just think do I want to exercise now I can't be bothered but do I want to have energy, be fit and healthy, stay fit and healthy for as long as possible? Yeah, then it's worth. Yeah. So it's Do I want to still be able to have the energy it? when I'm a grandparent to be able to run around after my grandchildren after the beach? It's those longer term questions, isn't it? Yeah, because trust me, toddlers run fast. <laughs> they might be small, but they're fast. <laughs> and as a grandparent, you know, you've got to be able to keep up. But it's, I mean, there may, oh, there may be all sorts of different things. And but this is the thing, isn't it? It's 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 getting that why. It's getting something that actually 
I don't shout at my kids enough. I'm not saying anybody ever shouts at their kids, but maybe, you know, you might say, I'd actually, do you know what? When I've been for a run, when I've been to the gym, whenever, I don't snap as much. I'm, I laugh more. Mm. I feel better. I've got more energy. And, you know, you'll, if you start to notice these little things, then they start to become important, don't they? And then it's like, right, I'm not in the mood today, but actually, I know I'll feel better. Yeah. So I'm going to go and do it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I, I know lots of people who, um, I've never met anybody, shall I say, who's um, gone and gone to do some sort of activity and regretted it afterwards and thought, God, I wish I hadn't gone for that run. I wish I hadn't gone for that walk. But I know loads of people who regret not going. I wish I'd gone for that run yesterday. I wish, because I know I'd have felt better. And that's the thing, isn't it? Once you get in the habit of it, you really start to feel the benefits yeah and one way that we can start thinking about making it a habit I think is start thinking really small so like you've set that appointment I'm going to do this then but the appointment you can give yourself you know like an hour's worth of time but the appointment could just be a commitment to I'm just going to do five minutes so I'm going to do five minutes of a strength workout at home I'm going to do five minutes of a walk and actually what you'll probably find is and I've found this myself once you start like oh that five minutes went fast and then you just keep going and before you know it you've done like half an hour 45 minutes a full a full workout so just set the expectations very very low to start with to make it really easy so that you can go well yeah I can I can do five minutes and then if you stop after five minutes, that's fine. Because all you've said to yourself is you're going to do five minutes. But most of the time, yeah. you'll probably carry on. And then that's far better than saying, oh, I'll do an hour. But then going, oh, I don't have the energy. Can't be bothered. And, you know, then you don't do it. An hour seems a much longer period of time than five minutes. So while you're building that habit, just think, right, I'm just going to do five minutes. Start really small. I Yeah, I, do you know taking the pressure off yourself is is you know if you think right this, I'm really busy and I, I just just set yourself 15 minutes but create an appointment time so it's like at this time I'll do 15 minutes and if you do 20 if you do 30 or more brilliant mm-hmm. I've noticed since I changed the goals on my um trackable my wearables since I changed, I, I was ill and I knew I wasn't going to meet them so I put them right down because you know I've still got to meet my goals so I reduced them right down but actually, I've never I've never pushed them back up again because it took a lot of pressure off me. And most days I hit more than the original ones were, but there's no pressure on me to do it because actually the targets are low. So as long as I've met my minimum, yeah. I'm OK. Everything else, and it usually is at least double or treble everything else, is a bonus. But because I've taken that pressure off myself, I think it it, it means that I'm more likely to go and do something for fun yeah rather than to meet a target and for me again as I say that was something that really helped me was was lowering my targets lowering my expectations but also getting back to enjoying things getting back to going for a walk not briskly or for fitness or anything but just to enjoy a you know a bit of nice weather or the snowdrops coming out or things and I think again is don't you think if if we can start with something we enjoy that has the 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 knock on effect of making you want to do it. Yeah, definitely, and that is going to be different for everybody, isn't it? So just think about what is it that that you enjoy, and how can you how can you get more of that in your life? So, like you said, don't think right. I'm going to go for a thirty minute power walk. Think I'm going to go for a walk and see what new flowers are coming out. Like I love that this time of year. Like you say, like the snowdrops coming out. Like oh, what other flowers are coming out? And using like all your senses that's one of the things I used to do on a bike ride I used to live in the lake district so it's really hilly and I did a lot of cycling and when it was really hard going up some really big hills I would be like right what can I see what can I hear like so it completely like use your different senses to take your mind off it when it's hard but that's slightly different conversation (laughs) Oh, yeah. Well, yes, actually, that's, but also that's a really good one, isn't it? But, you know, listen to a podcast, listen to a meditation, listen to an audible, you know, audio book, other audio book providers are available, but listen to an audio book, things like that, because actually, um, 
often you'll want to carry I I I was listening to to an audio book and I'd find myself walking a bit longer because I wanted to get to the end of the chapter or something. Yeah. So I'd sort of say, oh, it's only another 10 minutes. I'll, I'll just carry on walking. And quite often that would spur me on in a way that um, just just going for a walk didn't. If I wasn't in the mood, mm. doing something like that would really keep me going. Um, and it meant I caught up on my reading and you know, a lot of the stuff I listened to on those sorts of things is self-development, which is always, again, it was a double whammy of I'm being, I'm, my self-care was not just my activity, but it was kind of my my self-development my mindset and things like that so I got two for the price of one so that's another thing I think women not just women but other people busy people don't prioritize is that personal development and I'm you know I'm a huge believer that we spend a lot of time a lot of emphasis a lot of money on professional development mm. but we sometimes forget about that personal development don't yeah. we and this way could be could be you know as I say you could go and do some activity listen to something and, and get both in and and just you know I'll just do a little bit more and I'll just listen to that and you start to look forward to it oh I'm really looking forward to my run because I can listen to this and stuff like that and do you think that's another way of looking at it is it's kind of it's it's an efficient use of time yeah definitely because if you think like um when when are you gonna also fit in listening to that audio book well you've just killed two birds with one stone or you could think like oh how am I gonna socialize with my friends you think well let's go for a walk together and then you've had that connection time and you've got some exercise done because you've gone for a walk together so yeah thinking about how can you make it the most efficient use of your time um definitely I think that's great and and if audiobooks is something you enjoy and keeps you walking an extra 10 minutes then brilliant but also you don't have to be face to face with your friends to go for a walk you could you could get on a a whatsapp call or something yeah and chat as you're walking and you're both together um but you know again it's an efficient use of time you're getting your activity in and you're having a chat with a friend um so something like that could work as well and it's but it's 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 getting it's getting started isn't it that's the hard mm-hmm. thing particularly if you are very much a people pleaser and you put yourself last because everything else is a priority and it's do you know what it's really easy to do when you're busy it's really easy how how can we anyone out there listening who says yeah but and that's the, the big one isn't it when people say yeah, well yes but typical people pleaser who's kind of thinking i just i don't know we i, I don't even know how to start prioritizing my myself and my activity what would you say to them so the first thing I would say is bring it right back to your values so what's important to you so if you value your health and you want to be around for the long term and you want to be able to help the other people in your life over a long period of time and stay well and health is important to you then you already have a reason to prioritize that activity that exercise whatever it is that you're choosing to do because it helps you connect with that why and with your with your values so it's not just saying oh this is just for me this is selfish this is saying no actually I know why I'm doing that I'm doing that because it helps me stay well so that I can keep helping other people because helping other people is important to me but I've got to be well to do that so bringing it back to the what's important to me why am I why am I choosing to do this I think is really really key first step and then thinking about the thoughts that come up around the the people pleasing the always putting other people first like and the reasons that you're not actually prioritizing yourself and prioritizing activity and noticing the thoughts that are coming up like this is really selfish or I don't have time or whatever those thoughts are I think right how can I reframe those what's the opposite of that thought what's a more realistic middle ground what is going to help me best to actually do this activity because I already know that it's important to me so when those thoughts come up again we can go oh yeah thanks for coming up thought we've 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 thought about this remember and actually this new thought is going to help me more so I'm choosing to think this different thought and so rather than thinking 
oh, it's really selfish of me, or I feel really guilty doing this. It's reframing that and reminding yourself, actually, I want to be here helping people over a long period of time. So choosing to exercise now is going to mean that I can help people over a long period of time because I'm going to be staying well for them. So let's reframe that to me doing this exercise is helping other people, right? I'm going to put my trainers and go. (laughs) So thinking about what's important, reframing those thoughts that come up and then starting really, really small. So if doing an hour's workout is too much time out for you, like we said before, just do five minutes, just 15 minutes, make a start. It sounds like start with your mindset, start with start with your why, start with this is why it's so important to me. So you don't even have to leave the house at this point or do anything. You just start with what, even if you spend five minutes or 10 minutes thinking these are the reasons why it's important for me. These are the benefits it will have for other people if I do this. And then, you know, and then go for five minutes, 10 minutes and gradually increase it up to the point that you feel comfortable with. It doesn't have to be an hour. Yeah. If it's 20 minutes, half an hour of quality activity, that's absolutely brilliant. But yeah, don't think I'm just going to do it. Give yourself give yourself the, the list of why it's important for you and for everyone around you. Because um, I think that you'll get used to, to to thinking that way, don't you? You think, no, no, I need to go because it has benefits for everybody you know doesn't like i say you don't even have to start with the run or the walk or the gym or whatever just start with the thoughts yeah yeah do you think it helps to write them down um, i think it can help i think especially some people and journaling on it so every morning i used to do a little journal and one of the things i would do is put like a little affirmation so one of the affirmations I used for a long time was today I am making healthy choices for me and then that would really start my day well because then the rest of the day if I was thinking like oh should I bother doing this exercise or oh I really want to eat that chocolate bar I would bring it back to that affirmation that I'd set when I was journaling in the morning of today I'm making healthy choices for me and then it just gets your brain thinking oh actually no I'm not going to eat that chocolate bar and I am going to go and do my exercise so yes I think writing it down can really help I think something else that really helps is looking back so once you've made a start looking back on the week that you've had and celebrating the fact that you've done it so no matter how little or much you've done just celebrate the fact that you've done it because it's more than what you were doing when you were doing nothing and actually okay so you might not yet be running 10k if that's your goal but you've run three times this week or you've done a walk run three times this week and that's loads more than you were doing three weeks ago when you didn't do anything so just celebrate the fact that actually you have started you are doing something and congratulate yourself for it because I think those little strokes help our mindset as well because the better we feel about ourselves the the more likely we are to do the good things that support us and if we're just constantly telling ourselves like oh I'm still not there yet I'm still so far away I'm not improving as fast as I want then you're gonna feel rubbish you're not gonna feel inspired and motivated to actually do it but if you can go ha go me I went out in the rain last week and I would never have done that before you you know like just celebrate the small things that you actually are doing and focus on that you're going to feel better and when you feel better you're going to actually do more and that's so important isn't it we tend to celebrate the big things we don't celebrate the fact that you know do you know what I really wasn't in the mood and even when I went out I wasn't in the mood but I went out or it might be you know I wanted the chocolate bar and more than I wanted to exercise, but I went exercising and I had half the chocolate bar, but at least I've gone exercising. Celebrate the fact that you only had half of the chocolate bar rather than the whole thing, but you also exercised. It, it's small things like that, I think, sometimes because that starts to build your your confidence in that I can do this, I am doing this. It starts to make you feel, do you know what? Yeah, you know, I'm, I, I'm doing stuff. I'm doing more than I was. I'm. This is okay. This is good, and and we forget sometimes. We wait. You know, we celebrate the 10k or the marathon. We don't celebrate the first time we went out running. Yeah, and had to give up after five minutes because we were gasping. It's like, but I did it. I went out. I went out. Like you say, I went out in the rain. You know, look at every day. Pick something tiny 
that you did that that's an achievement yeah doesn't have to be the big stuff does no, it no and actually what keeps us going is recognizing that we are doing the small stuff we are doing because the hardest thing is showing up day in day out at the start before it's an ha- a habit because once it's a habit it's really easy and at the start yeah. we expect that we'll feel motivated all the time and it's just not true you have to actually just do it because you feel better the motivation comes from doing it and it becomes easier the more you make it a habit I always say that is motivation isn't something you start with. It's something you develop as you go along. And one of the biggest motivators is noticing those small little achievements along the way Um, that I, oh gosh, I actually ran to the end of the road. Whereas before I I jog run to the end of the road and back again, or I actually could, I could breathe properly um, for half of my run. It, you know, the small things really matter. We're talking about running here just because it's easier, but it could be anything. It could be yoga, it could be stretching, it could be anything at all. But it is, it's celebrate the small, notice the small stuff and celebrate it. And that's what's going to start to build your motivation, build your confidence. And as I say, fill your oxygen tank up so that you've got plenty for everybody else. You'll have, by taking some time for you, creates, I think, more for everybody else yeah because it's quality isn't it yeah and I think if you're not doing it and you're feeling rubbish then you're probably more likely to be taking part in behaviors that maybe don't support you to be the person that you want to be mm. and show up as the person that you want to be so maybe if you don't do that exercise or activity that you planned you're gonna like dwell on the fact that your energy's low and you're feeling rubbish and so then you might turn on telly and watch Netflix and then before you know it like it started the next episode and then the next episode and then you're late to bed and then you're feeling grumpy the next morning and you're not being the person that you want to be because actually you've you've just got yourself into that negative mindset so it's so helpful for everybody when we actually put ourselves first and and say no this is important and I'm going to do this for me and you feel better for doing it and the more you realize how much benefit it has for other people around you as well it's really good Charlotte this has been so interesting and I just think it's something that hopefully a lot of people will recognize themselves as people pleasers no I haven't got time for that for me and all that would be a bit selfish it's not selfish it's self-care it's self-compassion it's it's self um, growth in a way is recognizing that you have just as much priority for you as you know for other people so tell us a little bit then about where we can find you if people want to find out more about what you do um so i would love people to come and find me and join my free facebook group so i've got a facebook group called draw the line and in there so it's completely free i put content out daily or at least most days i do some free mini trainings in there and the topics are all about some managing stress boundaries mindset self-care and it's all about helping you to actually get yourself off the bottom of that priority list so we touch on lots of different topics and loads of really really valuable completely free support in there so that is um facebook.com slash groups slash draw the line here but we can give you the links anyway sarah can't we i'll put the links in the podcast yeah definitely but draw the line here because that's sometimes what we need to do is and put ourselves above the line rather than below it yeah absolutely brilliant other links if people want to find you in other places i'll make sure all your links um you know for instagram and um coaching your website and that are all in the podcast but charlotte thank you so much for coming in to talk about how important it is that we prioritize ourselves as well as everybody else um possibly more so so thank you very much. You've been listening to me, Sarah Belitho, on Creating Active Lives with my guest this week, Charlotte Lawson, who has talked to us all about making sure that we put our own oxygen masks on first. Thank you so much for coming thank along. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for listening to Creating Active Lives with me, Sarah Belitho, and my guest. Join me each week for more on how to create and sustain everyday activity and follow me online at Fitness Career Mentor or Bad Newless if you're interested in career development and more on creating active lifestyles.